Hello again, and welcome back to Melville Weekend, part two. Uh, I hope it's going well for everyone. Uh, the weather got a lot better here on the East Coast. And uh, today we're going to be focusing on the strange dichotomy between the heights of Ahab's supernatural desire for vengeance and the raw reality of 19th century uh, American industrial whaling. So uh, in our game we've included many of the sailors that are designated by their nationality in the chapter Midnight Forecastle uh, to add layered dynamics to the sailor deck and we also tried to ascribe each one of these uh, sailors an ability that relates to their general demeanor in that chapter. Now granted most of them are drunk and interested chiefly in dancing, singing, and fighting uh, but we included these cards to evoke the sort of melting pot feeling that Melville obsesses over early on in the book. Uh, the idea that men of many nations are coming together to reap the riches uh, from all corners of the earth and share wealth and success in a grand industrial American progress. But Melville asks us also, progress to what end? Now, a huge part of Moby Dick is documentary, an in-depth look at something at once commonplace and also generally unknown. Um, Melville elevates these common workers to the heights of myth while incorporating his elation at the possibilities both grand and dark of American democracy. Uh, this is from Knights and Squires. If I shall touch that workman's arm with some ethereal light, if I shall spread a rainbow over his disastrous set of sun, then against all mortal critics bear me out in it, thou just spirit of equality, which hast spread one royal mantle of humanity over all my kind. Uh, but, you know, democracy or no, Ahab is lord over the Pequod, and his enormous character uh, has deep ties to Shakespeare's King Lear, uh, grappling with his fate and trying desperately to control it. Um, Ahab seeks truth. Uh, as he tells Starbuck in the quarterdeck, all visible objects, man, are but as pasteboard masks. But in each event, in the living act, the undoubted deed, there, some unknown but still reasoning thing puts forth the moldings of its features from behind the unreasoning mask. If man will strike, strike through the mask. How can the prisoner reach outside except by thrusting through the wall? To me, that, the white whale is that wall, shoved near to me. And as King Lear does in Shakespeare's tragedy, uh, Ahab leans on his fool, uh, Pip, as a cushion against the impossibility of his purpose. And Pip, after his near drowning, speaks prophecy uh, veiled as insanity. And Ahab feels this insanity and supernatural logic uh, against his own and tells Pip that like cures like and that Pip's insanity may be a remedy to his own. Uh, but in the end, as with Lear, Ahab turns his back on Pip and fulfills his fate as he must, uh, despite the desperate cries of the truth teller. Um, so in our game, Ahab and Pip are inextricably linked, uh, and the way in which they affect each other can create complex uh, situations, depending on how the cards are played. And we can't wait to hear uh, what you all think of the Pip Ahab mechanic uh, once you've gotten your copies of the game and experienced their complex relationship for yourselves uh, in active gameplay. So that's all for now. Uh, thanks for listening and have a great holiday.